you're in Durham and you talk to people and they're like progressive, they have okay. a point of view and they know the world and you get to Raleigh and uh, you're like, huh, where's you. that? Yeah. Ann Arbor, Detroit, I mean, New, it's all over here. New York, where's that? <laughs> it's like, uh, bye. <laughs> I was in Raleigh, man. When, right, right, right before the war started. We went to this little cafe and ordered some french fries. They said, you mean freedom fries? I said, no, oh, I mean french shit. fries. Don't serious? start this shit with oh, me. Oh my God, unbelievable. Well, they won't support us and we saved their asses in World War II. I said, World War II, that's 60 years ago, man. What's that have to do with now? Well, I'm keeping score. I said, well, do you realize that the French bombardment of Cornwallis forced him to surrender, so he saved our country? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess we're even, right? You know, that's a fair trade. We saved theirs, they save ours. You know, and he's like, well, everything that's French should be sent back to France. I said, well, let's start with the Statue of Liberty. How's that? Which he didn't know. Then he kind of froze. I don't want to talk to you. I was waiting for the price of wine to go down, but it never did. Man, I just called all my friends. I said, all you dumbasses who have French bottles of wine, just give it to me. Don't throw the shit on the ground. Give it to me. I like the French, and I will drink the shit, morons. All right, well, back to no point. Yeah, right. One thing I want to get a sound on. Because okay. I realized when you were playing the set, okay, bye. groups don't last very long. This, this quartet's been together for a very long time. Yeah. Um, can you just address like, uh, the quartet, how long it's been together, and what it means to have a group that stays together for that length of time? Well, this, this particular group, uh, this particular version of the group, the quartet has been together for 20 years, basically. But every time a new person comes in, it's, it's different. And uh, this particular version of the group's been together five years. But Jeff Watts, the drummer, Jeff and I have been together for 20 years. And Eric Revis was in the band for seven years. And uh, Joey joined right uh, after Kenny's death, Kenny Kirkland's death. And uh, I mean, a lot of people say it's hard to, to keep a band. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's hard. I, I, I think that, I think that like there's been like this strange kind of shift in jazz. It's always been prevalent to a degree, but now I think it's, it's really pervasive where people that are playing are thinking more in terms of marketing angles. You know what I mean? They're thinking of, of, they think of records as from project to project to project, not in terms of like inventing reasons to make the band better and forcing them to deal with music that makes the band uncomfortable in order to get better and those kinds of things. It's, it's, much, more, it, it's much easier to just get a bunch of famous guys to play on your record and stick a sticker on and then the promoters will bring you in and you know it's just like the whole that machine that works i think the musicians are now starting to think like that and i think that uh the music suffers as a result of it so i i don't think it's hard to, to feel the band you just if you, if you make the kind of music that guys want to be committed to and want to play then you, you it's much easier then it's not all about money because that's the hard part how do you get people you challenge them i think and if the musicians want to play music and there's a good core group there, everybody gets excited and we hang in there and we put up with each other's stupidity. <laughs> you know, we just put up with it, you know? Good. I like that. Um, uh, tell me about Miguel. Uh, you know, just start from scratch as my guest artist today. Yeah, my guest artist today was Miguel Zenon. He's an alto player from Santurce, Puerto Rico. And uh, I first came to his attention when I was working on a, a David Sanchez record. <clears throat> I first, uh, he first came to my attention when I was working on a David Sanchez record. I think it was uh, uh, Malaza is the name of the record. And uh, at that time, he was really influenced by Steve Coleman. But I was very surprised that he was able to take Steve Coleman's uh, uh, musical approach and play it in a way that was very, very organic. And it wasn't just rote method performance. That was the thing that surprised me the most. It proved that, number one, he had really good ears because to incorporate someone else's style and not sound stilted when you do it and actually not sound exactly like them is a very, very cool thing. So it, it, it kind of stuck, stuck to me. You say, yeah, this kid's, he's something. Because I walked up to him and I said, you know, Steve Coleman, huh? he's like, hey, well, you know, and he's a real shy guy. You know I mean? He doesn't, like, he's not, you know, he doesn't practice uh, self-aggrandizement at all. He does not talk about himself. And then when I heard that he had a band, see, that's the trick for me. When a guy has a band, I say, yeah, okay, my guy. You know, if a guy calls me and says, well, yeah, man, you know, what kind of projects are you interested in? Not my guy. But, you know, I heard Miguel had a band and he was looking for a label and it was just a, hey, man, if you want to come here, you're welcome. And he wanted to. And that, I think that that's the, the, the thing that's, that's great about these guys. They want to be on that label. They want to be on the label. And that, that, that makes it so much easier. You know, we're not in bidding wars and you know how that whole system can get. We're not a part of that system at all. And, and I feel very blessed. That, that these guys actually want to be on the label. You never mentioned Marcellus Music as a label. 
Oh, That's well, you know. <laughs> they don't know fuck it. You know. Um, uh, Newport. Um, when was the first time you played Newport? Was it with Art or...? No, I, I think the first time I played Newport was with Winton. Really? In either 81 or 82. And uh, I've only played here, I think, four times tops. I think once with VSOP, maybe. I'm not really sure. Definitely once with Winton and uh, once with my band and then this time. And there were long gaps in between. It was like 82, 83, then it was 87, and then 2004. It's been a while. You've done thousands of festivals in Europe, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, and thousands of concert or club appearances here in the States. Um, is there anything that you can say about Newport that makes this like a different kind of experience than everything else? And the ones in Europe? Yeah. Well, the ones in Europe are better, but we can't say that. So okay. listen. <laughs> People actually listen when you fucking play. It's amazing. <laughs> what a novel concept. Yeah. What? No beach balls? I feel so strange here. Well, what land like the, is this? Then there's the other extreme, like Montreux, where... Oh, well, that's no not a jazz festival. Yeah, yeah. That's not, it used to be a jazz festival. Right. It's a pop festival. It doesn't yeah. matter. They don't count. But uh, let me think. Let me think of some good lie. Uh, that's the good sound bite. Hey. Ugh. I mean, you know, I love the venue. Kill all the people, get some new ones in. This place would be fantastic. <laughs> you know, but it's just, you know, it's the yachting community. I, I don't know what this... What, what should I say, man? I mean, the, the, it's bucolic. I mean, the... the, the this is, this is, yeah, okay, I know what it is. Okay. Yeah, because I'm thinking, yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, how should I start it? Uh, I, well, I don't know what your thought is, so I, I just... Uh, just mentioned the, Newport. The, yeah, well, the, the thing about... Newport is... The, the, the thing about Newport that, that is different from any other festival in the world that I have played is that uh, the, the setting cannot be beat. Nowhere. I, you know, like in, in, in France, they have two festivals that are played in ancient Roman ruins and the acoustics are beautiful and it's really really nice but to be standing on a stage and looking out across the water it's just it's, it's like a whole nother if you're not careful and it's happened to me you can lose your place in like the bands are hitting the cues letting me know it's time to play and I'm like oh and, and, and you know it's happened a couple times uh, I, I really I really, I really like it. I mean, I love looking out there, and it's, it's a very, very beautiful place. What a beautiful fort. Great. Thank you, man. Pleasure, brother. Take it easy. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs>